things have arguably never been more uncertain for Hollywood than they are right now. For though many hoped that 2023 would be the big comeback year for the industry, the numbers mostly say otherwise. That's because at the time of recording anywhere and as per Box Office Mojo, almost half of the 20 highest grossing movies of the year so far have either underperformed or outright flopped at the box office. But why? Well, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 reasons huge movies keep flopping. Number 10. Grossly overinflated budgets. It simply can't be ignored that so many of the huge movies flopping or underperforming in recent times have had mammoth budgets. Like, even more than usual, with the likes of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny and Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 nearing $300 million apiece. While Fast X cost an eye-watering $340 million, making it the eighth most expensive movie of all time. Generally speaking as well, a blockbuster needs to gross 2.5 times its production budget to be deemed a commercial success, and so by the time movies cost $300 million, they're looking at a break-even point of $750 million. And hey, that would have been a tall order even back in 2019, where nine movies grossed over one billion, but in the very different theatrical environment of 2023, it's just a ludicrous expectation. Had many of 2023's films cost 50 to 100 million dollars less, it goes without saying that they might have actually stood a chance of turning a profit. I mean, when your movie needs to make $700 million or even $1 billion in order to make a profit, how can you avoid making a bunch of flops? Number nine, audience habits have changed since the pandemic. The film industry is still reeling from the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And while there has been a degree of recovery, it's also fair to say that audience habits have been changed by it, partially due to studio strategies that were implemented during lockdowns, which saw more movies getting a simultaneous streaming and theatrical release. Audiences simply haven't rushed back to the multiplexes in droves for much outside of either horror films or splashy, buzzy blockbusters. The biggest financial hits of recent times, those being Top Gun Maverick, Avatar The Way of Water, the Super Mario Bros. movie, Barbie, and of course Oppenheimer, all benefited from being sold as major events that exploited people's FOMO. With home cinema systems improving every year and many investing in bigger TVs and better sound systems when cinemas were shut, it seems harder to convince audiences to leave the house these days, especially families who would rather wait a month for their movies to hit streaming at a fraction of the price that it would take to see them in cinemas. Number 8. Franchise fatigue is real. Now, franchise fatigue has of course been discussed for years, but right now there's a huge argument to be made that the franchises that were once Hollywood's bread and butter have since become stale and lost the interest of general audiences. I mean, take the MCU for starters, which has seemingly lost its ability to consistently churn out $1 billion movies, in part due to the relatively mediocre quality of the post-Avengers Endgame content, and also general exhaustion with the sheer amount of MCU content produced when including the Disney Plus shows. Elsewhere, Fast X undeniably suffered from the series running out of fresh ideas in recent entries, Transformers Rise of the Beasts failed to rouse much interest, and The Little Mermaid just felt like yet another watchable but forgettable live-action Disney remake. As for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, well, it's easy to piece together how mixed reviews and a huge gap between installments hurt the bottom line. But worst of all must surely be The Flash, which despite initial buzz and the return of Michael Keaton as Batman, illustrated how audiences aren't just going to flock to the cinema on nostalgia alone. Hollywood, and in particular Disney, being forced to rely less on rehashing mainstay franchises could be a good thing for the long-term creative health of the industry. Number 7. China is no longer a reliable market. Once upon a time, China could be handily relied upon to save an underperforming movie from flop territory. I mean, take Terminator Genesis, which famously made more than 25% of its money in this region, without which it would have definitely bombed. 
Or look at Resident Evil The Final Chapter, which was a domestic bomb thanks to a US opening weekend that raked in a dreadful $13 million. However, that ultimately ended up not mattering at all, as the same opening weekend it brought in $90 million from China alone, helping it turn a huge profit in international sales. But since the pandemic, China's support for Hollywood features has waned considerably as their domestic film industry has grown, with even numerous MCU films in recent years receiving no theatrical release at all in the country. And while the ban on imported movies has technically been lifted, China still has become much pickier over which stateside tentpoles it grants a release. And even those that do get released have found themselves underperforming compared to prior entries into their respective franchises. And so, China simply isn't the box office magic bullet that it used to be. Money can still be made, of course, but it's very far from a sure thing these days. Number 6. Shorten Theatrical Windows Perhaps the single most seismic change to the movie industry since the pandemic is the shortening of theatrical release windows. Gone are the days of most movies taking 60 to 120 days to hit streaming services, with even commercially successful films often landing on PVOD within just 3 or 4 weeks, while outright flops might do so even faster. While a shorter gap between theatrical and streaming is absolutely beneficial for customers, it's also conditioned audiences en masse to simply wait for the streaming release if they're not 100% sold on a film. And animation has clearly been the most blatant victim of audience habits changing around streaming, given how few animated films have been true smash hits at the box office since the pandemic. And as per Screen Rant, Disney CEO Bob Iger even went on the record to lay part of the blame behind Pixar's recent box office disappointments on the company's approach to streaming. Number 5. An Overcrowded Release Calendar Though 2023 was hailed as a major comeback year for blockbusters, it's simply proven too crowded a field for all movies to thrive. Take June, which saw Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse overperform and take business away from Transformers Rise of the Beasts, which released within spitting distance of The Flash, Elemental, and Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And most recently, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 had its legs cut off by Barbie and Oppenheimer releasing barely a week later. By comparison, the Super Mario Bros. movie became the highest grossing movie of the year so far by releasing in April, which was largely a dead period for blockbuster releases otherwise. Though the summer months traditionally mean big business for studios, they'd certainly do well to consider the benefits of releasing in less traditional months like September, to avoid these movies just cannibalizing each other's profits. Number 4. Poor Uncreative Marketing If nothing else can be blamed, there's usually one answer. Poor marketing. Marketing is, for better or worse, an extremely important part of guiding a movie to commercial success, and great marketing has helped many terrible movies print money, while awful marketing has done the opposite for genuinely great films. 2023 has certainly been no different, and outside of the organic Barbenheimer viral campaign, 2023 hasn't offered much in the way of particularly memorable or compelling movie marketing. In an era where audiences need movies to stand out in order to be drawn to them, if bog standard trailer drop just isn't going to do it. Selling sequels in increasingly long in the tooth franchises is especially challenging as well. Like again, Fast X, which simply looked like just another fast movie in all of its trailers and promotional materials. As such, it takes some seriously creative, clever marketing to maintain the audience's attention in this day and age. Number 3. Audiences may care about reviews more than ever. With audience habits changing and there being so much incentive to simply wait for streaming, quality has arguably mattered more than it ever has, or at least a high Rotten Tomatoes score at least. What I'm saying is basically gone are the days when a critically panned Transformers movie can walk away with a cool billion dollars. Critic-proof movies will always exist to a certain extent, of course. I mean, the Super Mario Bros. movie didn't exactly get great reviews, but factoring in everything else on this list, audiences really need to know they're in for something great to leave the house for a film. Given that most of the year's biggest movies have been derided for a lack of quality, it makes sense that audiences aren't enthusiastic to catch them on the big screen, especially with a streaming release being potentially only mere weeks away. 
Number two, the SAG strike prevents actors from promoting their movies. Though the ongoing SAG after strike only began mere weeks ago at the time of recording, there's no denying the huge impact it's going to have on every studio's ability to market their biggest upcoming movies. And what a way to drive the point home that an actor's work isn't only essential in, you know, making a good movie to begin with, but also promoting and selling that movie to audiences after it's in the can. I mean, can you imagine promoting Barbie without having Ryan Gosling or Margot Robbie there to do all of these great viral interviews? And so, with studios seemingly preferring to shoot themselves in the foot and delay upcoming movies to 2024 rather than, you know, work things out with the performers, this problem has the potential to impact many movies, at least in the short term. Between the performers and, of course, the striking writers as well, Hollywood execs need to recognize the importance of the people who make these movies to begin with and treat them accordingly. Number one, the cost of living crisis means less disposable income for movies. And finally, it is impossible to ignore the fact that people's wallets are already feeling strapped around the globe as nations grapple with their own cost of living crises, ensuring that going to the movies is kind of a luxury that people can easily go without. Inflation and price increases for everything from energy to basic foodstuffs have left many people's paychecks not going as far as they used to. And given what a night at the cinema can cost a family, it's a little surprise that so many people are opting for the cheaper streaming option mere weeks later, and saving the big screen experience for only the most sure fire projects, the Barbies and the Oppenheimers of the world. For many, the home experience is good enough, and it's an easy cutback to make if things are tight financially. This, like the strikes, at least has the potential to change in the future as global economic conditions improve, but for now at least, can people really be expected to splash out on multiple movies per month if they're already struggling with money at home? So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Why do you think there's been so many major flops this year? And do you think it's going to continue into 2024 and beyond? Let me know. And while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.